All right. Welcome to the Marriage Boss Podcast. And today I'm really pumped up because I've got a special guest who was uh, referred to me by a dear friend to both of us. Um, today I've got Nate Wagner on the show today. And Nate is a husband. He's got a beautiful wife, two adorable daughters, one who I met the other day when we got a, like a pregame talk. She happened to be with him at the library, totally adorable. Um, Nate is a therapist who helps build strong marriages. His life's work is to eliminate the stigma related to mental health and suicide loss. He lost his brother to suicide 13 years ago, and he's now working with an editor to finish his memoir, which he hopes to release in uh, September of 2016. Nate, welcome to the Marriage Boss Podcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, so we got a chance to talk a little bit the other day and kind of get acquainted. And uh, I, uh, as I mentioned, I believe very strongly in the message that you're sharing. I, as a matter of fact, took uh, a quote, uh, 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 an actual post from a Tim Ferriss uh, uh, blog, which Genev, thank you, Genev, uh, gave us in an email. And I actually shared it with my sons and my wife, and we had dialogue about it already. So I know that that is something that is near and dear to your heart when people share this message. So, so let's just jump in. Do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Just give us a little background on you first before we jump into the questions. Sure. Yeah, I wanted everybody to know that I what you said in the bio that I love my family and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, like I said, I lost my brother 13 years ago to suicide, and it rocked my world. And it actually is helped me to be a better person and I want to share the hope that I have gained through all of this that there is hope out there and and so I do a lot of work with couples and that's kind of partially why we're here today mm-hmm. um, and I'm super passionate about that because as we work with couples you know as well as I do that and your audience knows that the couples impact their kids which impacts their kids which impacts their kids and that is such an important part of what I do. It's probably the hardest that I do when I have two people in the room that aren't getting along real well, but it's when I can help them see eye to eye and take time to communicate and to really share what's going on and what they're experiencing and see them reconnect is just, there's nothing like it. And then I'm, kind of connecting the suicide piece, which is definitely uh, a unique part of what I do that I don't hear a lot of talk about. So I really want to um, eliminate that stigma associated with the suicide and mental health and getting help because we all need to get help. Awesome. So why don't you tell us uh, at this juncture, um, how do you combine suicide prevention and marriage counseling? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that it's basically on a case by case basis, it's not like an everyday thing that I get to do this. But by helping strengthen marriages and by them coming to me for help, I, I think that's the biggest barrier that I have is people. C- coming to get help so late. So mm-hmm. if you're out there, you're having a little bit of issue, come get help. Talk to Rick, talk to me. Um, get help before it's so far along. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as far as combining the suicide piece with the marriage piece, I'm work, I'm, it's a work in progress, and I'm really trying to help my clients understand that um, – if there is a suicide loss, that that is going to hammer the marriage. Uh, my parents actually got divorced as partially as a result of, of my brother's suicide. And I want to reverse that statistic that's out there. My parents became one of those statistics that, you know, um, so many people lose lose their marriages as, as a result of a suicide loss with blaming and all that. And we can talk about that yeah. more. So I think maybe this would be a good time to talk about um, things that can come up in a relationship, signs, uh, you know, we're, we're trying here to prevent and maybe catch something earlier. So why don't we, why don't you and I try to, you know, dig up a couple of things that we can think of that we might be able to point out to the audience that they can watch out for. Um, so 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know the first thing that comes up for me is feeling alone and mm-hmm. feeling feeling depressed in that relationship. So you're in a marriage. Uh, let's 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 talk to the men right now, guys. You're out there. You are feeling a little bit disconnected, and and you're alone. Even when you're with your woman, your wife, your partner, you're feeling like you're starting to feel maybe there's a depression coming over you of some sort. It's not controllable anymore. You can't just fix it by, you know, taking your mind off it, reading a book, having a drink, dealing with whatever. You still feel the same way the next day, the next day. You're alone, you're disconnected, and you're just really frustrated. Absolutely. That's that I'm feeling alone, but I'm with other people. And that's where um, part of that's certainly anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. Um, We can feel that. And I think that what happens is when we start to feel alone, then we start to pull away from our spouse or our loved ones. And what happens is that we no longer are going to the people that love us the most to help support us. Yeah. And so there's the partner, the spouse <clears throat> feels isolated from that person. And then that conflict ensues. And yeah. then you might seek another way to connect and it could be to a substance, to an activity, mm-hmm. to actions and, uh, you know, doing things that may be destructive um, and cause you either to disconnect more, to self-destruct in your life more financially, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, You know, you could engage in the wrong behaviors at a time like this to try to either numb the pain, Mm -hmm. recover that feeling of togetherness and or, you know, solve this issue. So this is a good time to reach out for help to anybody, certainly your spouse is, is, is a good person, say, listen, I'm feeling, I'm feeling disconnected. You know, I was in a room full of people the other day, and all I could think about was myself and how alone I felt. So these are some of the things you need to say to just step right out of that and just tell somebody. So, you know, out yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, guys out there are listening to this. I'm not going to do that. I'm too proud. So shame kicks in vulnerability issues kick in. We've got to realize that when we start to feel different than we used to feel when we liked how we felt, that's the time to say, I have a problem of some sort. I don't know what it is. And so, you know, this whole topic, but certainly any kind of thing that makes you feel not yourself, you got to tell somebody, listen, I'm, I'm feeling strange. I'm feeling something weird. I'm feeling lost. So we've got to be able to say these words. You know, you can practice saying them in the mirror first. Make a recording. Send an email. Text somebody. Just say, I need help with something. Can we talk? Mm-hmm. And uh, Yeah, and that can be simply over a, a cup of coffee with a friend. Yeah. I mean, the, the beauty of coming to a therapist is that we're able to be objective we're not we're not a friend we're we're not going to we're not a part of your environment and so we can be objective and so that's the beauty of it but you can go out for for coffee or for wings or whatever the case may be and talk about this with your friend and they can support you and they can be like well I think you might need to kind of maybe get a little bit more help than I can offer and, and, and professional help might be might be necessary. But the point I'm trying I want to make is that it's 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 that relationship. The best part and I was just talking with a colleague about this just a few minutes ago, that what works in therapy, in relationships, the reason that it works is because of the relationship. We call it therapeutic alliance in, in my world. But it's simply relationship and connection, and and that is what really makes the difference. Yeah, and I know when you and I talked uh, a couple days ago, we talked about the value um, of having friends and being able to go out on a casual basis, you know, have wings and a beer. 
Uh, tonight I happen to be going out with uh, one of my best buddies who I know for 47 years, 48 now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We try to go out every month. We play pool, we have dinner, we have a cup of coffee, and we just chill. And I'm, I'm going to tell you now, Nate, that is therapy from the minute we see each other and we get that first hug in all the way through me mm-hmm. whipping his ass at pool because I whip <laughs> his ass regularly. If he's listening, you know you're getting your ass kicked tonight, Steve. And so, and, and but we're going to talk about our marriages, our family issues, our health issues, our celebrations, our victories, our failures. And we've been doing that our whole lives. So mm. that is someone that you can count on. And so if you feel yourself being disconnected from your friends, that's another sign that you need to get some help. If, you, if you're connected to your friends and you can, can go out and have that, you know, that friend discussion, which is therapy, then good, go do it. Do more of that. And maybe even that friend can help you or get you some help if you feel like you're going in the wrong direction. So let's jump in now to um, why should we talk about suicide loss and prevention? Because it's not something that everybody talks about regularly. Yeah, I think it's so important. And, and anytime, um, my, well, we connected on Facebook as well. And, and so you've seen some of the stuff that I've, I've posted. But anytime I can post something along the lines of, well, it's, it, the reason, the why is it's not talked about and it needs to be. It is a huge problem. And this past, uh, in the last three months, I went to a funeral from a girl that I didn't, I never knew her, but she was really super impacting of tons of people. My church was packed, probably 3000 people at the funeral. And, um, I literally parked further than I had ever parked before. Um, in, you know, I've been a part of that church for a long, long time. And, um, I went because I was like, I want to know what's going on and, and what happened here and, and all that. And um, I wanted to be there to be a support. And, and it's just so hard for people to reach out to somebody yeah. for talking about this. So we got to break down those barriers. And so it, it has to be talked about. Um, so that's why, you know, that's I was shamelessly promoting, uh, you know, we, we talked about this before. I could shamelessly promote my book too because it's got to be talked about. People people need to know and there's such a disconnect between what physical illness and how we talk about physical illness versus mental health. There's this post that I got to get to you and I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I would love for this to be part of the show notes, but it basically talks about how absurd it is for us to say, oh, just get over it or um, you so if somebody's arms broken and the blood's spewing out like what are you going to say to that person well get help and and do what you need to do but when somebody is hurting in an emotional sense we just say you know get over it yeah pick yourself up by bootstraps all of that and so this is a huge passion of mine and it's not like it's in a lot of ways it's even greater than the at least equal with the marriage piece because um I think that we we have to share about it and I'm going to put out there like I posted um yesterday that you know I was thinking about my brother and I'm thinking the positive the positive things about my memories of him you know we automatically go into the negatives but and I <laughs> didn't until recently go into any of the positives but we need to talk about this. It's yeah. it's a it's a major problem. It's you know call it an epidemic, call it whatever you want. But it is we need to talk about it. And and so I'm willing to put myself out there. I don't know too many um, therapists in my you know would be wanting to share it in this detail. I go um, I go way into it. You know, I go deep into it. Well, let's, let's, let's touch on a couple of things that we think um, would be good uh, starter phrases maybe for, let's go, let's go right to parents. Let's say, um, what can our parents that are listening uh, say to their kids 
what is age appropriate. Let's cover that a little bit. Let's talk about um, what you would suggest parents, because a lot of our audience are, uh, you know, 35 to 65, so they have kids, they're married. And, you know, what can we say to our kids to get this conversation started? Yeah, it's, I think for one, we can knock, stop using the, we kind of flippantly um, use phrases like, you know, or or even symbol, like physically using either uh, like the symbol of a gun or, or um, I'm, thoughts of, or not even just like, if that happened, I would kill myself or just flippantly talking about that. That's not going to help anybody. Mm -hmm. um, actually, to be completely transparent, it infuriates me when that happens because it's just not sensitive to those of us that have experienced this. But mm -hmm. um, so that's like what not to do is to continue to, to emphasize the, the stigma that's against it. So the uh, what they can do is just if your son or daughter is, you know, seems down and out, just say, Hey, you know, how are you feeling? Like, you know, what can we, you know, is there anything I can do? How can I help you? What's, what's going on? And having that, again, that rapport or that connection with your kids. I have, you know, I have a four year old and, um, an almost one year old and, you know, I'm trying to have that connection with them so that I can make sure that they can communicate if they're feeling a certain way to, or to me. Well, I can, I can tell you that from my own experience, and this goes not only for me as a parent, and I thought about this early on, um, but also in all our relationships, we have to make emotional deposits ahead of time before we want to make a withdrawal. And mm -hmm. having a conversation about suicide could be perceived as a withdrawal from that kid. So I'm giving advice right now, people. This is advice. Make emotional deposits. So ask your kid how you're feeling, how you're doing every day. So when it's time to notice a change and say, how you doing? Can we talk about something serious? I have a link I want to send you about a post regarding mm -hmm. suicide. You're not having that discussion for the first time and you're not asking that kid, how they're feeling only because you've noticed a change in them because at that point it could be too late. Um, kids want to know that they're cared about 100% of the time when mm -hmm. there's no reason to care about them. When you have a reason to care about them, it could be too late. So make sure you appreciate the people around you. Um, if it takes thinking that they could all be gone or you could be gone tomorrow, then think that way because you know what? That's true. Mm -hmm. I could be gone. They could be gone. Any of us could be gone tomorrow. You know, I experienced the loss of my father at 19. I didn't expect him to die, and he did. So uh, it was very hard to deal with that. So, so realize we are all very vulnerable. Uh, we can't control this. Um, you know, I use the example when I, when I met Carol and I, I got to know her a little bit. I have like a, you know, like an ADHD type of personality. So uh, she's a very practical, stable, conservative, you know, so she couldn't really understand a lot of the ways like my brain thinks. And because I didn't look like I had any kind of a, a disorder or a condition or whatever you want to call it. You know, I know in the psychiatric community there's a million arguments about how to label this. But whatever this mental difference was in me and her or emotional, um, I used to say to her, listen, honey, if I either, you know, had, a, had that broken arm you said that was bleeding or mm -hmm. I was in a wheelchair or I had to have some kind of protective device or crutches or, or something that you could see to know that I had some kind of uh, disability or handicap, it would be easy for you to identify this mm -hmm. you know, condition or this difference between us. But because I don't, you can't really, you're expecting me to think and act like you do. Mm -hmm. And I don't. So uh, now we have obviously, after all these years, we're together 30 years, we have discovered why this is a gift and why it, because of how I do what I do, I've, I've figured out how to use it to my benefit and to the benefit of the world around me. But when I was growing up and in, in school, it was horrible. So, so realize there's so much behind what's going on mentally in our heads and in the heads of the people around us, our children especially, our spouses. 
So for all of you out there listening about, you know, your spouse is different than you. You know, they don't think or act the same way as I do. I don't know why, because they should, because my way is better. That's one of the reasons we're here today is to have this discussion, because if someone is acting or, or thinking differently, that's the time to have the discussion and say, you know, what's going on? You know, are you thinking differently because that's really your brain chemistry? Or has something happened in your world at work, in your relationships, physically or emotionally, that's causing you to, to need to have this discussion right now? So, so we need to talk to each other more often and ask questions mm -hmm. when we don't think there's anything wrong. So when we do think there's something wrong, we've made enough deposits so that our bank account is overflowing. So when we take a withdrawal and say, listen, I need to talk to you right now about something serious. If that's either you or you feel like something's going on with your spouse, child, coworker, sibling, parents, that's the time. So make emotional deposits so you can make a withdrawal and ask the question. Yeah. I, can I just give a book recommendation yeah. in uh, regards to that? Um, you probably already know what I'm going to say, but The Five Love Languages, uh, Gary, Dr. Yeah. Gary Chapman, um, that is the book. I, I just recommended it last week. Uh, that is the book that is it's simple, it's practical, and actionable, and almost every marriage can benefit from it, if That's not every. And that... I I I just love that book and it's it's so practical it helps because if we the, the, you know the five love languages and and I know you're going to put the link for that but uh, if if my if my wife or if, if for example if I um really want to spend quality time with my wife which that's my top one is is if my wife ever does listen to watch this, listen to this, she already knows that quality time is my thing. Yeah. But if she gives me like acts of service, which is doing stuff, well, that's great. I appreciate all that she does for our, our kids and everything. But if there's no quality time, one on one time, and, and for me, Rick, that's going to going to a, a out to lunch, that's going for. Uh, she doesn't drink coffee, but um, still working on that. But um, that's me drinking my coffee and having a conversation in a star in a Starbucks. Um, that's face to face, no yeah. TV, no kids, yeah. like just one on one time. So that quality time, if I don't get that, then I I'm getting those withdrawals. And if she's trying to give me, you know, gifts or acts of um, acts of service or um, you know, the, the physical touches, the, the other one that I haven't mentioned, those are good, but it's not going to fill the love tank. And so I just kind of wasn't planning on sharing that, but when you're talking about those deposits, yeah. that is the book that I highly recommend for that. That's a good one. And you know, it's funny, as you're talking, I'm thinking, what a great way to get to the topic of how we should really interact anyway. Mm -hmm. prior to the, what we're talking about here on the show topic. Because if we do this stuff every day, we're probably going to have less suicides. We're going to have less depression. We're going to have less disconnection. So mm -hmm. in a funny way, we're actually giving you the action steps ahead of time, which can be a remedy to one of these, ep uh, you know, this epidemic. And uh, it's ironic, but all the things we're talking about right now, if we did them with our spouse and our kids, we'd have a healthier, uh, you know, a, a healthier group mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and so on. So, so, the, so sometimes getting to the root of uh, of of all this is is it's magical. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I hadn't even thought of the, my passion for five love languages as connected to all of this as much as. Now I realize that yeah. it is, yeah. um, but it's so true. Like when I feel connected a hundred percent to my wife, like things are going well, like I interact with my, my kids better and, yeah. and, and then my friends and, and everything and everybody, but my clients benefit. And, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, so that's, 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 uh, some great stuff. Super important stuff. Yep. Gold nugget moment. Yeah, right, definitely. We'll put a star on that. All right. So tell me now. Um, what are you working to accomplish 
by sharing your sibling's suicide loss through uh, in the story through your book. Yeah, I really want that message that you, you know, obviously I want pre- prevention, okay? Mm-hmm. That's ultimately I want to, to stop this. But I want you to be, there's so many people that have lost a sibling to suicide that I want them to know bottom line the purpose of my book is to know that there is hope um, my, my title of my book is very long but it's so it's exactly what at least at this point that's what it's gonna be it's called sibling suicide and then journey from despair to hope and that was my journey I had despair and to the even point of considering taking my own life to sharing this with others and so that's a long time of moving from that so i really want to accomplish eliminating my part of whatever part i can eliminate of the stigma against uh, about suicide and mental health and getting help i want people to get help like i have clients who are coming to me because I'm putting myself out there as I'm not afraid to talk about suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not fun, but people are coming and people there, this is a huge issue. And so I honestly want to get them before it's to the point where they're like too, where it's too late. You know, I wanted them to get to the point where they feel like they can get the help that it's not hopeless but that they can get help and I want as on the on a clinician side of things I want people who are in my position to realize hey you can share your story you know Um, yeah I just said that I can contemplated taking my own life on your podcast here Um, I've already put that in the book so it's nothing (laughs) But it's not something that that people are willing to talk about. And so transparency, I really want for myself transparency and being genuine and, you know, and sharing that hope. Well, I think that makes you more attractive, um, not only uh, as a professional, but when we say attractive and we mean that people are going to want to buy your book, they're going to want to hear you speak, they're going to want to listen to your message. And I'm thinking about my my own experiences, uh, you know, when is it appropriate to talk about suicide? It's appropriate when you're super healthy and you're not thinking about it. And it's appropriate when you are ready to kill yourself that day. So Mm -hmm. it is appropriate all the time and it's appropriate at all the moments in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. So so if you knew that your best friend was going to take their own life tomorrow, would you talk to them? Yes. If you knew that your best friend was in no danger, but maybe they had kids or they had teenagers or they were in an environment where they knew that there were other people who were, listen, we all have the same problems, the same challenges, the same doubts about ourselves. And and some people have uh, some chemical issues which change the way those thoughts um, uh, come out in their behaviors. And mm-hmm. so we have to be aware as... Um, as community members, certainly as professionals who uh, interact and help people um, solve their challenges and, and, and cope with the day-to-day um, of how important these conversations are. And, and I'm all about having conversations about everything. Talk about money with your spouse. Talk about love. Talk about childbearing. Talk about commitment when you first meet someone. Talk about all these things up front because you got to ask questions to learn about other people. And, uh, and as a result, the older we get, the more we realize when we ask these questions, we learn more about ourselves. Yeah. So uh, it's very valuable. Absolutely. And I think it just helps us, this conversation and things I read and, and everything just helps us to recognize how important life is. And so yesterday, I, you know, my mom's in North Carolina, my dad's in Pennsylvania here. Um, but I called up my why well, first I text my mom, hey, are you, because uh, it was earlier, so I was like, hey, are you, can you chat for a few minutes? And I knew the answer was, of course, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but just having, making those connections and, and keeping that so that, you know, you never, I, 
I don't know if that was my last conversation. I mean, obviously, I want it to not be. Yeah. I'm coming up in you know in in a few weeks, but like just not taking any of those things for granted, yeah. especially with family yeah. and those really close friends, yeah. regardless of where. I mean, we're talking you're uh, you're you know a, a distance away from from me, um, but we're talking here on Skype. Yeah, you know, and there's just no like the barriers that we used to have are no longer there right and so reach out get make that so here's an action point i guess is what i'm trying to say like is just reach out to somebody yeah i don't care like if they're doing great excellent yeah. reach out to them if they're not if they're not reach out to them yeah. because it's you never know and i love what you said rick about like regardless of if they're doing well or not you know developing that relationship with your kids with your spouse with your friends where you can help be there to help them yeah because yeah. if if you only do it when you know something's off it's it's harder to accept yeah. that for yeah, sure people are going to say well no now you want to talk to me right because i acted out enough or i'm screaming for help crying loud enough now that you heard me and sometimes they're they're going to be very uh resistant to mm -hmm. taking your information, getting the help, or getting advice from you, or anything like that. Well, my my four year old Emma, uh, I'm gonna gonna use her as an example. Um, any of you guys and gals who have a four year old, you know that uh, at least for my for my Emma, she just she likes she loves to talk like constantly. We don't really know what she's saying half the time, mm -hmm. um, but. She, She'll act out because she wants attention. She, all she wants from me, from her daddy, is for me to hold her. Yeah. And that's almost always going to completely resolve the problem. Yeah. And so being proactive as dad to spend that time with her, um, don't get me wrong, it's, t it's a challenge because Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I'm in sessions. So yeah. I get home at you know, 8 30, 9 o'clock, she's might be in bed. But guess what? Last night we snuggled for a little bit. Yeah. And it makes all the difference in the world for my connection with her. So that's just a specific example of that connection and the importance of that. Good stuff. Good stuff. And you know what? That's a good note to end on. Um, Nate, tell everybody ha uh, how they can get a hold of you, where they can find you. Um, yeah. You know, give, give us some information. Yeah, so this will be kind of evolving as time goes on. But right now, the best way to get a hold of me is um, on Twitter at, at uh, I think it's just at Nate Wagner. We'll give the exact uh, address here. Um, I also have my professional website, which is wagnercounselingservices.com. And I'll give that to Rick as well. And that's going to be where you're going to be able to uh, in the near future, you'll be able to sign up to get my um, to find out about my book, okay. uh, kind of to know uh, when it's coming out. I am going to be having a chapter or two that will also be available for free once that's available. Um, but basically, right now, WagnerCounselingServices.com will be able to find. Um, my my per, my professional website, which will get the book, and um, I'm going to be publishing sibling suicide uh, journey from despair to hope. Um, um, my plan is the um, I'm sorry, the last quarter, September first, is my goal, and I am putting that out there, and I. Um, I'm going to be publishing it through Create Space through Amazon, so you'll be able to find it there. And um, yeah, Twitter uh, at Nate Wagner, and then I don't know if I have something else that's added to that. Um, and then uh, yeah, just reach out to me. I would love to hear um, your story. Um, I'm also certainly on Facebook and um, Instagram. Um, I'm actually for Instagram. It's at, I'll give the exact address to Rick, but it's at Nate Wagner. M A L P C um, with an underscore there. Um, follow me there, and uh, would love to get to know you guys and help in any way I can. 
and add value. So I appreciate being able to be on the, the show and look forward to just see where this ever all this goes. Good stuff. Thanks, Nate. I appreciate having you. And uh, let's give another shout out to Genev. Genev, thank you. We love you. Yes, yes thank you. Thanks for hooking Genev. us up. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.